So, we are back to being caught up, uh, more or less. Today's stuff is Tafvav. We pick up on Hamlet's bet. Two dots, about ten lines from the bottom. The mate Choletzet. So now we're dealing with an interesting application about the case of Yibum, for those who fondly remember learning Mesechas Yivama. So, <laughs> so um, basically this woman, now she was warned and she was went into uh, seclusion with the appropriate witnesses at each stage. So now she's a sota, um, and um, and uh, the lo- halach of a sota is that she's a safek, but she's treated as a vadai. I mean, we don't know what her status is, but uh, it's going to be clarified by the uh, ritual when she's brought to the base of mikdash. But until that status is clarified, she's treated as a vadai because the language of the Torah is vinit mea, right? Vinit rav vinit maa. Um, uh, so, and then it says, Ziloni Tma, but anyway, but it sort of just declares her as Tmea once these, uh, sus- based on the, uh, sus- well, according to the Chalab Tukim, based on the suspicions, but according to the way Chazal read it, based on this procedure, or based on the evidence that we have so far. So therefore, the result of that status, of that Tafek Fidesz Vadai, is that she's forbidden to have sex with her husband, her husband's forbidden to have sex with her, and if she's married to a Kohen, um, she can't eat Truma. Um, and we're going to learn that later, because it says Vinit Ma multiple times, that some how it has challenged, you know, the, uh, the, uh, re- the, the status of the marriage, that the marriage, I mean, if you're not having sex, you know, but the point is it's not just a technical prohibition. There's some type of a, there's some type of way in which those bonds have been weakened um, or, um, or, or uh, you know, somehow defiled, so therefore she also cannot eat truma if she's married to a Kohen. Um, and then the Mishnah says that if the guy dies before they've had a chance to clarify her status, um, the uh, brother, if they have no kids, uh, cannot do yibum. Now, if you just take a second and think about that, because yibum is an act of sex, mm-hmm. right? And it would mean beginning a sexual relationship with this woman, but the, he's taking his brother's place. And the brother at this, sta- at this stage was forbidden to have sex with this woman. So that's why it says he can't do yibum. On the other hand, she's not, there's this element of doubt here, whether that re- she really did commit adultery, so he still has to do chalitza. What so, about if the guy who she was warned against being secluded with was the brother? Okay. We see Asr Asr Labal and Asr Laboel. So all right, so let's take a look at the um at the Gemara. Amai. Amai says the Gemara, Titiabing Nam Yivume. Let's first establish how we know he can't do Yibum. So Amar Rav Yosef Amar Krav Yetz Ami Beitova Hachava Itali Ishacher. She shall leave his house and go to be with another man. Um, this is a man who divorces a woman, and in the Pesukim, right, it's Kimatzaba Ervatavar. She divorced because of some uh, act of uh, nakedness, meaning some sense of sexual violation. So what we're going to assume is is that that includes a woman who is discovered to be uh, not only committed adultery but suspected of it, a woman who's a sota. Um, now again, the Pesukim is that he divorced her, but we are reading the Pesukim that once it's Matzaba Ervatavar, then however she winds up leaving her first husband whether he divorces her or he dies the next stage is the halcha v'haisal ishacher and the drasha is ishacher v'lo yabam that she can only go to another man but she's forbidden to the brother-in-law so again a very uh, particular read of the psukim we're reading it specifically that it's a case of a sota not a definite adultery or anything else um, and that not that she was divorced but um, under whatever circumstances she is no longer with her first husband the next guy she marries has to be somebody completely different cannot be somebody who's essentially a continuation of her first husband the whole yes. basis of Yibum is that the, the first husband died <laughs> right that way, as opposed to divorce you mean yeah, yeah. so there's no question that it's not shot of the psukim Rashi is saying that this Russia is reading it like, okay, that it's, it's A, Vishyuchami Beto, he writes her guess, or, but really, however, she winds up leaving him, the next stage has to be a completely different man. And it's not, right, right, well, well, that's what the Gemara is going to get to, but anyway, but yeah, it's clearly a very uh, particular, narrow, you know, and strange read of the Pasuk. But at, at this moment in the Russia, yeah. it's, it's saying that you can never do Yibum in the case of a divorce that was motivated by... Well, you never, do, you never do Yibum in a divorce. Right. The strange read is that we're saying, we're ignoring the divorce stage of the narrative of the Psukim, and we're saying, Matzaber Vatavar, and then she always has to go to somebody completely different. Well, never to another. Even if you accept that reader, yes. 
but they're still it should be, shouldn't be superseded by the mitzvah death and, and the requirement for right well that's what we're learning from the Yisrukim that that's excluded right okay clearly as I was going to say there's a logic that's motivating this it's not, it more starts and Tozel even says this at a certain stage mm-hmm. like okay so let's keep on going okay so uh, so if you're saying that it's excluded from Yibum based on this Pasuk so then uh, you shouldn't need Chalitza there should be no mitzvah of Yibum at all um, look uh, if, the, if the husband was around, even though she now is a, uh, a sota, you would still need to sever that bond through a get. So, hashanami ti bai chalitza. So here too, the, uh, the, the relation, you know, the connection of the husband, what we call the zika, transfers to the brother. So, and that bond has not been severed, even if, she, even if she committed adultery, it needs to be formally severed. So the husband would have to sever it with a get, he'll have to sever it with chalitza. So, even if yibum is not an option, you still need to sever the bond with chalitza. Now, Tosos points out that the logic here is a bit of a problem because there are many situations in which the brother does not um, do yibum or chalitza, but if the husband was alive, he would still need a get. Right? Let's say she was an erva to the brother. Right? Let's say it was a case about a woman who was an elenist and not able to have kids. Let's say even if it was a woman who had definitely committed adultery. In all those cases, the husband, if he was alive, would need to give her a get. The bond does not sever automatically, but nevertheless, once she's fundamentally excluded from the mitzvah of Yibam, there's no need for chalitza. Mm-hmm. All right? So it's not, you know, the, the, it doesn't really work, that argument. So Tosos, in the end, basically winds up saying what the Gemara is going to say. That's not really based on the Pasuk and this argument that we're sh- <coughs> shaping, because again, if so, how would you know that she wouldn't be fully excluded and not even chalitza? And it's really just going to be based on the fact that if the husband can't be having sex with her, then how does the brother, whose relationship is a continuation of the brother's relationship, wind up basically having sex with her? That's really what the argument is. So all the various questions everybody is asking, you know, Tosa sort of concedes, like, bottom line is, it's not really the stress show. Yes. Yeah, so. This line here, um, yeah. At what point in the SOTA process would he have to issue her a gift? So if she is definite, well, if she Before definitely fra- she, uh, no, 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 he never has to issue a gift. She might turn out to be okay. Right. So then, what, if it turns out that she's guilty, then he has to or get. Or if she refuses to drink, if she or if she admits her guilt, oh, she, or oh. any type of a thing where we don't, where her, she currently has a status of being forbidden because of the doubt, and either that status is confirmed or it's never going to be resolved. Okay, but uh, but as long she, as she's no, planning, she drinks, she she drinks, she's she's guilty, guilty, and it works, so to speak. She's she dead. Dead. Then, according to according to the psukim, the psukim don't make it sound like she dies, but according to Hazal, who, who understand that she dies as a result of it, then right. yes, then you don't need to get, you'll be, you know, because she'll be dead. Be right. Awkward, yeah. Okay, so, the matter sounds like this, but it never ends by itself, you always need to get. Alright, so that's the drasha, but again, there's a problem with that logic, because if it really is excluded from Yibam, then yeah, even if the, guy need, if the husband needs a get, she should not need chalitza, but we'll see, the Gemara's going to continue to to uh, make clear what sort of it's lo- the logic is. Now it says like this. Um Isudami, and others say, Amrav Yose for Khmana Amrav Yatsami Beito, Bahaukha Vaisali Shahir, that after this case of of Matsa Ervatavar, she goes to another man. Achya so why? To the least to Rayli Base. The point is this guy has a responsibility of divorcing her, so she should not, you know, destroy the house. Like she's now a woman who's, you know, suspected of adultery or um and we learned before how uh, when the woman, you know, more particularly emphasize the woman and Anyway, when there's when there's uh, when there's cheating going on in the marriage, it destroys the household. So that's why he divorced her. So you want this guy now to go ahead and do yibum after uh, you know the whole point was to get the whole point was the whole point no, but it's bit me. The whole point was to get rid of this woman because of she's a danger to the marriage. Now there's a, now the gemara is going to say, well, then everybody else should be forbidden to marry her also if she's perceived of as such a danger. So let's take a look at the next line. So any woman who is divorced or, you know, uh, in this case, of even widowed after being a suspected of having committed adultery, it should be forbidden for anybody to marry her, you know? And again, the point is that she's only suspected, but nev- at this stage, but nevertheless, if that's what you're saying, that we're going to assume or whatever, be concerned that maybe she did it, and that's why the guy can't do Yibum, then nobody should be allowed to marry her. 
So the Gemara says, Amar Leh, he said back to him, Mi karamina la la ba'al karche. No, everybody else doesn't, isn't, requ- isn't obligated to marry her. So, you know, it's like, buyer beware. You know, you, <laughs> you know the circumstances. You make, you, you make a choice, okay? But at least that's your choice. All right, whereas here, how could it be that the Torah would obligate the brother to marry this woman after, you know, these problematic circumstances? All right, so that's sort of the argument. Now, again, so, but how do you know you get to this middle stage where, okay, you don't do Yibam, but you do Chalita, but maybe that's the point. Like, we're not saying she's completely excluded. And again, it's, it's really, she's not a Vada'i, so, a Vada'i woman. But she didn't, didn't definitely commit adultery. There's only a doubt. But that doubt should be enough of an obstacle, you know, to do Yibam, even though, because it's not definite, there still is required a Chalitza, yes. Uh-oh. Every once in a while, I'm reminded how much we miss Rivka because no doubt she was right. pointed out that just because she's suspected or even committed adultery doesn't right. mean it was all on her. Right. You know, I mean, she, sure, she if, if it was so, she was the one who committed the act. Right. But the relationship between them and what the husband did, you know. Well, I, I really, first of all, do well, appreciate. Well, 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 you know, shouldn't be a mess. Well, that's going to destroy a house. Well, well that's true. Also, yesterday, yesterday we focused on the adult, the male adult, the man uh, who's the adulterer and his responsibility about that. But I really appreciate those comment, which is, you know, even if, until now, what I've really been saying is she's only been suspected, and maybe he's suspecting her because he's jealous, and that's not really happened, but I think Dove also makes an excellent point, like, you know, even if she actually did it, what's going on in the relationship, that she, you know, there are times when, you know, there is, about who's at to blame in these types of circumstances is not, all, is not at all clear. So I really do appreciate that, and yes, and here... This. Okay, so whoever's fault it was, let's separate these two... This, this yeah, but families, right? yeah, but not these two it's, families. But, but anyway, yeah, right? But, but even if it was his fault, then you know, whatever. Okay. Like, but why does that mean the brother will be will, will be the same? Will be different than the third party altogether? Well, you know, <laughs> people's allegiances are often with them. Uh, okay, maybe. And actually, we're going to see about that in a minute. But here, at this stage, what the Gemara is saying is, is that is that you know, given the, the the suspicion and the question, whatever, there's no way you can mandate that this other man you can make it. People can choose to, another man can choose to, but you can't mandate that this brother would actually now have to go ahead and marry her once these questions have been raised. But because it's not definite and all those things, and it's only put just we can't require it, but there still needs to be a chalitza that needs to be done. Now there's a very nice little toast at the bottom of Hayam and Bet. The Lisrei Lebeise, Vata Mestidyami Nami Yibume, the toast points out the phrase restore le base to, to, to destroy the house. Where's that phrase coming from? So it says very nicely, Rabbeinu Chananel hit in Dvarav. It's very nice. Rabbeinu Chananel, it, it was, it, you know, sort of explained what, you know, Abayi was saying. Hit in Dvarav, like, he gave a little tam to, uh, you know, he, he helped explain about what Abayi meant. And here's what he said, but I just love that phrase, hit in Dvarav. Like, like he, what? He sweetened, right, what Abayi was saying. Upirish, Rahmana Amar, Asher lo yivneh. Live no to low listor, right? Where did this phrase come? Listere lebete, destroy the house. It is the exact inverse of asher lo yivne et beit aviv, that the obligation of the yavam is to build, achiv, the obligation of the yavam is to build the house. So this woman who suspected it like, you know, I mean, the home wrecker, right, that would be the least rebete. So how could that be in the midst of building the house? All right, so that's what the Gemara says. But again, it's only a suspicion, and therefore chalitz is still needed. Vigadami, and some say, Amr of Yosef, hakasuf kara acher, when it says marry another man, he is not a, uh, a, a appropriate, like, equal of the uh, first guy. Like, uh, what does that mean? Shezeh, hotzi bishom so the first guy did the right thing. He got rid of this wicked woman. Again, notice how... Is a regular divorce? No, when it's because of Matzaba Ervat Tavar. So we're all assuming that we're dealing, that the context is a Sota, a woman who's suspect, suspected. Even though, again, once again, notice that he's labeled as a Rishah. How does he multi? He divorced her. What do you mean? I'm sorry. So I asked what I asked you, if, if we're talking about... But that. not a regular, a regular divorce. That's a result of Kimatza Bayer Vatavar. Okay. Okay? So, a woman is suspected of being a sota, and he, and he basically divorced her. No, but again, just labeling her as a rishah, just because of the, of, of the suspicion. Vizeh, and the guy who now marries this woman, who was Matza Bayer Vatavar and divorced, the he's, the he's, like a, he's of a different, he's of a different category, because he was prepared to marry such a woman. So that's, in a normal case, we're dealing 
with divorce, but again, it's a matzah by ervat davar. The point being that somebody who chooses to marry this woman is considered to be like uh, not acting properly. He's not, you know, he's a chair. He's not in the same madrega as the guy who, underst- who, who divorced her. So, so if that's how we look at the guy who married her, you're going to say that the Torah is now going to mandate that a man's going to marry this woman after, if she's left uh, widowed from this guy after she's suspected. So Amalei Abaye, so Abaye said, Elameata, if that's true, that the Torah can never mandate it, right? Because how could the Torah mandate marrying a woman, this woman who's suspected of, of having committed adultery? So I'll give you a case where the Torah will mandate it. How will that be? Nisus Lacher, let's say she's suspected of committing adultery, she goes ahead and is widowed or divorced from guy number one, marries guy number two, has a completely happy marriage with guy number two, okay, umate, and then guy number two dies, below Banim, and now guy number two's brothers are obligated to do yibum with this woman who was suspected of having committed adultery while she was married to guy number one. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so, lo tisyabim? So, you telling me that she shouldn't do, that the brother shouldn't do yibum? That kasuf kuro acher gabay? So, acher, that the pastor called this guy an acher, that he was like on a lower level, that he was willing to marry her, and that really, the show would never want to mandate anybody should marry a woman suspected of adultery? So, the says, no. Gabi da hai, miya b'shem tov havi kaima. So now he was like, you're a But the second guy, the actually, she had a good reputation. So, you know, maybe she did shuva, maybe it shows that she never committed adultery. So, the way we... Maybe the problem was with the first guy. Maybe the problem was with the first guy. So now, in in this context, we look at her differently. Yes. Now we're focusing on the woman, right? The right. guy who married her. How did he know that it was going to work? He didn't. So number two who married her shouldn't have married her. Shouldn't have married her. Right, we're not saying. Number two shouldn't have married her. But by the time number two dies, when we, now we come to the question of Yibum, now we look at a relationship with number two. We're, oh. we're, we're prepared to reassess. <laughs> but the, we're, we're skipping, we're aligning the question. The question is, <laughs> should the Torah be um, prescribing Yibum for a person, for a man, for the wife of a man who's not worthy. No no no. no, 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 no. The point was, since okay. the Torah, no, no, no. Okay. Since the Torah calls the second guy a chair, yeah. it shows that you're doing, that he made a wrong decision yeah. marrying such a woman. Yeah. So si- that shows us that it's wrong to marry such a woman. Right. So therefore the Torah would never mandate Yibu with yeah. such a woman. Right. Okay, so now it's saying, but after, after guy number two did the wrong thing and married her, and now they've been having a happy marriage and she has not been suspected of adultery with guy number two, okay. it shows us now that actually... Well, she might not be such a bad yeah, woman. It's not no, so, it's yeah. not so it's simple, not, though. Yeah, 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 you're saying, the wrong it's exactly thing. the same before. It's right. more of a reflection yeah. on the first person. You could say... Right. Because she's <laughs> been <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So he shows that he's a shuvah or something. No, not he. No. She, she. No, no, the second guy had nothing to do with it. The yeah. second guy had nothing He's to do with it. Whether we call the second guy an achair is only a way to get to the fact that she is a problem. We don't care about the second guy having done something wrong. It only reflects the fact that she's a problem and you, she should not be a woman that people should be marrying. That's the way the Gemara is, is making the argument. But the whole point... What? If you, you, the Acher, the second guy, the first guy knew what to do with such a woman. He divorced her. The second guy was too focused on his own d- desire or attraction or whatever, and he's not of the same madrega as the first guy. That's a bad choice to marry such a woman. That's the way it's reading it. So it reflects. That's a good point is making that the word Acher intrinsically has a negative connotation. That's the way, right. Not because of the man. No. Oh, but that? Because of the word. I think we should move on. <laughs> Let's move on. We're only talking about the man to reflect the status of the woman. All right, we're moving on. I, I can't spend more time on this. <laughs> yeah, I also have not. I know. I'm not getting why everybody's so confused, but we'll talk about it more after class. Okay. So the rest says like this. Rava um, Amar, Kava Chomer, Imnesra, Imnesra b'mutala b'asala lo koshikain. Look, Rava says, the guy she was mutter to, her husband, this act of now that she became a sota and suspected of adultery, made her forbid- forbidden to her husband. So this, so how now, if this thing makes her now forbidden to the per- man she's permissible to, that she's married to, the brother of the guy who's, while she's, while this, while her husband is still alive, is a riot to her, is forbidden to her, a, a, she's a married woman, and B, it's her husband's brother. So how much more so should this act 
now sort of make, you know, make her forbidden to the brother. So if it's a strong, if being a sota is strong enough to make her forbidden to her husband, certainly it should make her forbidden to the, to the brother. Now again, it's a questionable argument because why don't we say that it's to make her forbidden to everyone? But, all right, but the brother, but the point is, there's already a problem with her marrying the brother, that it's an arayot. So, and therefore, if there's another monkey wrench thrown in there, or something else problematic, there's no way we're going to monitor that relationship with the brother. Okay. You don't have to go so, so far as to everyone. Right. Amalia Bayi, Elamiata, Klein Gadol, Shakidish, Let's say married a widow. Okay. okay. Right? Uh, whatever. Fine. Yeah. He betrothed. Doesn't really matter. Umate, the Yeshlo Ach Kohen Hediot, and he died. And he has a brother who's a normal Kohen. Woti Tabin, so this brother can't do Yibam. Why? Inesra Bimutala, because this, uh, this, uh, widow was forbidden to her husband, which was the, because the Kohen Gadol, widow's only forbidden to a Kohen Gadol. How much more so should she be now forbidden to uh, this, uh, her, the husband's brother? Which is not true, because he, he, he's only an Amana. So the Gemara says, the Gemara says, one minute, that's not a good comparison. Ha Asira So, um, first of all, what do you mean she became forbidden? She didn't become forbidden to her husband. As an Amana, she was always forbidden to her husband. The <laughs> God, the Christ. So, Mutterla. Um, so it's, and she's not forbidden to a man who was permissible to her. Usher Lahu, he was always forbidden to her. So that's not a relevant example. It's not like something now <laughs> affected her status that somehow, you know, you know, challenged the marriage and got into way of the marriage, which now should logically also have an impact on the Yabam. So the Gemara says like this. Um, um, Ella, okay, here's the example. A woman is married to a Kohen and she was raped. Umate, and then the brother died. V'yeshlo ach, uh, so now that act of rape made her forbidden to her husband. V'yeshlo ach halal. But the brother, here he has actually a brother who is a non-Kohen. How could that be if it only is to be a father's brother for Yibam? That the father then married another woman who was, let's say, a divorcee, and therefore the child, the which would be, would, it would be a halal. And it goes, right. And the brother's from the father now. Exactly. So in this case, would you say, who is permissible to marry such, uh, such a woman? A woman who, who you know, um, so would you say, Lotis Yabin? He shouldn't do Yibam? Why? Here's your logic. Inestra Allah, this act of rape made it forbidden to her husband who was permissible to her. So, but also the Lokos, okay, now how much more so should it make it forbidden, I say permissible, excuse me, if made it forbidden to the man who was permissible to her, so how much more so should it make it forbidden to the brother? So, the Gemara says, no. Onus Bishrael Mishra Shari. Look, a case of rape by a non kohen does not make a woman forbidden. The guy be the high leki isura. And regarding the brother who's a halal, he's basically a non kohen. It's not a forbidden status at all. Meaning, being a woman committing adultery is would be if would be just as irrelevant of a problem if she was married to her current husband as as well as she was married to the brother. Right? Committing adultery is always a problem for in any relationship. Mm-hmm. Okay? And therefore, if it got if it affected her current marriage to the to the husband she was permissible to, how much more so should it be a status that carries over and remains a problem to the case of Yibum, to the brother, which is a continuation of that and it's also problematic because of brother. How much more so should that st- problematic status carry over? Whereas the case of rape of being married to a co doesn't isn't it's not relevant to people that are not, to men that are not Kohanim. So obviously it shouldn't affect her relationship with the brother if the brother is not a Kohen. Okay. So, you do oh, yeah, so one way or another way, we basically have said, if I, you know, and in the logic really makes a lot of sense. If this status makes sex forbidden with her husband, how can the Torah go ahead and mandate Yibum, which is when you see the brother basically as a continuation of the relationship of, you know, the dead husband. Okay, but because it's only based on suspicion and not definite knowledge, the Chalitza is still required. What, yes. Can you re-clarify, why did the Sigi, what's the Sigi doing here? Why did it bring the case of the Kohen Gadol and of the Chalal? Because it wanted to sort of make a question, the argument, that if she becomes forbidden to her husband, how much more so she become forbidden to, ma- to the, bro- the husband's brother. So it said there are cases where she's forbidden to the husband and not forbidden and to not the wife. Ah, Wouldn't he have had to have divorced the wife when she got married? Yeah. Yeah, but it didn't happen. He didn't have a chance to. Oh, okay. Right. okay. So is the halal considered a coin? What? Is the halal considered No. no. So, um, if in this case, uh, is he just marrying her or is he doing Yibam? He would do Yibam. But then the idea of Yibam is to continue the name of the brother, right? right. Yeah, I mean, it's a little it's ironic. Continuing. It's continuing the name, but not as a, but not as, co- as a Kohen. It's a good, that's a good point. That is ironic. Okay. Then, then there's no Yibam, obviously. Right. 
Okay, so now let's now let's move on. The Elu Asurot Mi Lechol Bitruma. So since we said that in her suspected status she can't eat truma, we're going to mention other cases that they can't eat truma, um, which basically mean we'll see the basically statuses that are not going to get you know when can't get resolved through drinking the soda water. So essentially these are cases that are not don't have the op- option of getting resolved. So while she's still suspected she can't eat truma, and there are cases and the only way she'll get out of that essentially is uh, if it gets resolved through the SOTA process. So let's take a look. Let's say she basically admits that she had committed adultery. Okay, then uh, fine. End of the, it ends right there. Okay, Rishabo Adim she or let's say witnesses came and said that she had committed adultery well, again. Killed. Well, okay, there wasn't hatra or something, but whatever. Anyway, so these are like obvious. In a way, it's funny. Like if as a suspected woman she can't eat truma, certainly in these cases where she even admits to it. But the point is, like then it doesn't even hold up the option. Then the whole process stops right there. There's not going to be a sota process in, after this. Get into the issue of merit, yeah, well, we'll see. So merit Amy shota, and if she says. I don't want, I refuse, I refuse to go through the process. The husband refuses to go through the process. So in a way, all of these are really telling us, not just, it's funny that it phrases it as asur milech betruma. What all of these are telling us are, these are scenarios where the, where the process, you'll never get to do, do, to doing the process. What happens when you, you don't have the option anymore of doing it? He refuses, she refuses, there's, she admits or whatever. Basically, she gets divorced without a ksuva. Okay? And then there, in all of those cases, uh, well actually, if the husband refuses, yeah. um, she might actually get the ksuva. Okay? I don't remember. But presumably she does, because it's his fault. But anyway, okay, but all those cases, it's not going to get resolved. So she continues to remain forbidden to be Ocheles Petruma. Or if the husband had sex with her on the way to, her, to her doing the whole process, so that if that happens, then he himself has violated the restrictions of the Sota. And in those cases, the, the, uh, you don't go through with the process of the water. Okay? So in all those cases, you're not going to go through the process, and therefore um, she is going to have to get divorced with or without Exuva, depending on whose fault it was. Um, and uh, she's going to remain Remain forbidden because the situation will never he, get resolved. If he dies, he gets yes. or not? We'll see about that. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, from what I remember, the answer is no. Why but we'll see about that. Why does he get divorced if they're still married and he, he's he's him, and he decides he really does want to keep her as his wife? Because once he created her status as a sota by warning her and her going into private, right, then that status doesn't get removed until the situation gets clarified. So she remains forbidden to him. So, but you're right. I mean, like, would there, could, could there be a way of retroactively retracting, you know, retracting your whole thing, right? right. So, all right, let's take a look at the Gemara. I mean, in a way, it's ironic, right? The, Gemara, the Torah makes it all based on the husband's jealousy. So according to the Torah, once the husband stops being jealous, the whole thing falls apart. Chazal that wanted to take it out of that just because just a man is jealous doesn't mean he gets to do all this to his wife and wanted to make it something a little bit more objective and, and you know, judicial and put it under based in, like, there's evidence and there's a basis of suspicion and so on, but then that also takes his discretion away from it away to, from a, to a certain right. degree. Okay, let's see the Gemara. Amar Rav Amar, said Rav Amar, Hadmi Osa Amar Rav Amar says, the following thing Rav Shesha said to us, the Anahir La'einan mi Masnisen, and he lightened our eyes from the Mishnah. He brought light to our eyes. He showed us that this Chiddush of his was really buried in the Mishnah. So let's see what his Chiddush was. Sota Shesha La'edim Yudina Sayyam. There's a woman suspected of adultery, and there are witnesses somewhere overseas, very, very distant, that knows that she's committed adultery. Anamai and both Kinosa. So now they went, and they were not aware of those witnesses, and uh, they went through the whole process, and she was, uh, the water didn't, uh, didn't have its effect. So everybody's now assuming she's innocent. So he says, no, the reason the water didn't have its effect is because there's actually concrete evidence. Okay, the whole point of the ritual is when wow. there's a doubt. But when, like, when it can't be resolved objectively, <laughs> but when there actually is objective evidence, even if we don't know it, then the ritual gets neutralized. Okay? Now, of course, you're going to say to yourself, so how do we ever know why she came out clean, right? right. So that, the, the, the Gemara is going to get to that. Okay, so... You know how common that really was. You know, well, all right, wait, exactly. Wait, 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 wait. I thought the, that you needed Adim for the stira, right? For the, yeah. For the tumor. This is for a- tumor. You need Adim for tumor, right? What do you mean? 
You need an aging if they actually, she actually committed adultery, no? Did we not say that? No, before? you need for to go through the process. You need aid him. What do you mean? No, to go, go through the process. Seriously. You need aid him that he that he, that they was warned and that she went into seclusion. No, she actually did. Right. If you have aid him, she committed adultery. Who needs the process? Right. Even if you have an aid she committed adultery. Who needs the process? Okay. 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 Uh, anyway, so the Gemara says, um, uh, where were we? My timer. Uh, what's the reason? Amakra. She went to this conclusion and she became coming and there is no witnesses. The lekadi yadiba means that nobody knows about it. To exclude this case, that as long as somebody knows about it, then uh, end of story. Um, so the interesting question is, how, are these edim or what if it's an edechad? Because we actually learned that an edechad, right, is, uh, is believed after Kino and Stira. So, would the water not work if there was an eight echad somewhere? So, Tosos isn't so sure. Okay? Um, and the question also, as we're going to get to the Gemara, is um, what happens if the witnesses come after the water? You did the ritual, and now the witnesses show up, and now it was like, according to him, now, oh, now we understand why the ritual didn't work, because actually, the, you know, and so on. What if only one witness showed up after the ritual? When do we say that Nate echad is believed after Kinoy and Stira? Is it only prior to the ritual to prevent us from going through the ritual and whatever? Or do we say, no, even after that ritual was done, when an Eidechad shows up, that becomes enough, uh, you know, basis to override, you know, sort of whatever the ritual seemed to have demonstrated. And he's still so, her husband then. Yeah. So anyway, but 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 that is a question whether specifically we mean edim or even edachad in this idea that it would impact whether the water would work. Okay. And I jumped a little bit ahead, but now we're also going to see what happens when they show up after the ritual. Okay. So that's what he says. Vanila aina and mimas nisin, and he gave light to our eyes from the Mishnah. Diktani uh, enlightened us. For Diktani was shabola edim shitmea. And witnesses came that she was Tmea. In that case, she would not drink. Now, when are the witnesses coming? That now she's forbidden, you know, and that uh, she doesn't drink, and that she's forbidden to eat truma. It was before she drank. Of course. Now she's a, you know, a, a demonstrate, like a, you know, a, you know, a proven adulteress. So, of course, the mission doesn't have to say the woman's proven to have committed adultery doesn't eat truma. Like, what's the Chiddush? Ella, the boss of the Shasai, the mission must mean that after she drank the water, and it seems like she came out clean, even so the witnesses showed, even after that the witnesses showed up. So why do we trust the witnesses? The, the ritual proved her to be telling the truth. If the water does not check her, um, if, if given that if there were witnesses, now we know why we would believe the witnesses. Because now that there are witnesses, we understand that even though the ritual looked like she was innocent, it really well, there's a different explanation why the ritual didn't work. Okay, so now then we believe the witnesses. But if the water works even when there are witnesses elsewhere, so now now it should become retroactively clear, deciding knew that these are these witnesses are lying, right? Because if we assume that the ritual always works, so then the witnesses showed up, well the, the ritual proved her innocent. So what you're saying, you must be lying. Now I love I love this because here you take something which is like, you know, for us this is always like, you know, trial by ordeal, trial by by miracle, right? Mm-hmm. And we but once we've put it all within a type of a based in context, which is what this whole Masechet does, it puts this whole ritual under objective evidence, witnesses, based in all these types of things. So now the ritual becomes a good evidence, you know, in a in a court. It would actually trump the, the testimony of witnesses. How could we trust these witnesses? The ritual ha- is stronger evidence, right? So, we also say, don't we also have this principle of the codes, Mancha, Ish, Menuke, Okay, so the Gemara's going to get to that. Maybe there are other explanations. Yeah. Fine. Anyway, so it says, like, so the fact that, so the fact that, presumably, we trust the witnesses after, shows that that must be because, now we understand that because there were witnesses, the, the water didn't work. So that proves his point. Okay? Um, so Amalei Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef said back, No, I will tell you that the water will work, um, even if there are witnesses. So like Michael said, there's other explanations why the water didn't work. How can we trust the witnesses then? Why doesn't the ritual, will the water prove she was innocent? No, there may be other reasons why it didn't work. For example, if she had merit, then it would not be immediately effective. That's okay, so the Gemara says... She had like a vaccine. 
The Ma'ay can be fugi. What do they debate? Be misnavna the Rebbe with Rebbe's statement that she would sort of um, um, uh, get, get so, sort of get sicker and sicker. If even if the merit is sort of uh, uh, postponing it, yeah, but that, yeah, I don't know exactly the root deteriorate. That was what I was looking for. Thank you. The, de- the, de- the question of deterioration. De- no, nah, I'm talking the Mishnah. Rebbe Omer the Chus Tola b'Ma'im Hamarim that if she has merit, it sort of it, it suspends the effect of the water. The Eda Yoledis in Shabachas, so it doesn't have the the positive effect. Obviously, if she's guilty, she doesn't give birth, but it doesn't have the negative. But but and uh, and she doesn't get better. You know, it doesn't make her like it doesn't have any of the positive effect. Ella misnavnav leches. She deteriorates. She continues to deteriorate. So she may suppose to misen. In the end, she has the death that the Torah described. Delayed reaction. Delayed reaction. Right, and it's like over a period of time, and maybe not as obvious. Well, maybe. Um, okay. Bosa Misa. So, the Shesha Savar, Bain the Rebbe. Now, what do the rabbis hold? That's what Rebbe holds. So, what do the rabbis hold? So, the rabbis, we assume, also agree that the Zechus prevents her from dying right away. But do they also agree with Rebbe that there's slow and immediately obvious deterioration? Or do they say, it's, you know, there's no obvious, uh, it just postpones it and then it happens at some very distant time? So, the Shesha Savar, Bain the Rebbe, Bain the Rabban, and Himis Nafna. That whether Krenzi Rebbe or the Rabbana, and she will deteriorate. So therefore, you, no, like basically, there's the rabbis don't disagree with Rebbe. Okay, so therefore, and that, if that's true, oh no, I think the question is maybe the rabbis say that she doesn't die. Hold on, I think I got that wrong. One minute. Um, Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. According to the rabbis, the rabbis disagree with Rebbe and say she does not die. The Zechus is told and she doesn't die at all. Okay, so the, 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 the Rebbe is responding. The rabbi said the Zechus is told and she doesn't die. And Rebbe said it's not true, she deteriorates and dies. So the question is, do the rabbis say that even though she doesn't die, do they say that she deteriorates? Okay, that's the question. So if everybody agrees that she deteriorates and they only debate if she dies, right, then the, question, then the point is, well, if she came out totally clean, then you can't say that it was because of Zechus Tola law. Because according to everybody, you would have seen her deteriorate. So that should have been a complete evidence that she was innocent. And now the witnesses say she's guilty. We should be throwing out the witnesses. Mm-hmm. The only way she could be totally not, the water could be totally not it's effective not is either the witnesses are lying or because the witnesses, oh, if there are witnesses, the well, water isn't effective. Well, 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 okay, so that's what Rav Shesha said. One minute. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. So, it says like this. So, uh, well, Rosh Hashanah Savar, now I totally lost my place. Rosh Hashanah Savar, Ben Rebbe Ben Olan, he misnafna. That either way she deteriorates. And therefore, if the water had no effect, so our, our conclusion is either she's in, the witnesses are lying and she's innocent, um, or that the water doesn't work when there are witnesses. And since the mission makes it clear we believe the witnesses, that proves that the water doesn't work when there are witnesses. Rav Yosef Savar, Rav Yosef says, "The Rebbe he misnavda. For Rebbe she deteriorates. The Rabbah Bana and Lo Avi misnavda. For the Rabbi she wouldn't deteriorate. And, and since she there would die be, either. and she wouldn't die either. There would be no obvious effect of the water. And therefore, that's why we believe the witnesses, not because the witnesses prevent the water from working, but because there could be other causes that the water didn't work because Where of we because because uh, we will see because <laughs> because of, because of her merit. Okay, you had a question. I did. Yes. So according to the the, the position of Shesha that. Um, if there are witnesses somewhere, mm-hmm. somewhere in the world, we don't know where, right? But they saw actually the the uh, the adultery. Yeah. Then the waters won't work. Yeah. So any time a woman drinks these waters, goes through the ritual, and and it doesn't work. Right. There would still be a suspended that's, suspicion. Right. That's what the Gemara is about to get to. The waters don't work because she has some suspicions. Right. Right. But also the big one the Rabbi, and, and for three years she just dies. She won't waste away, but she will. Believe. No, 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 I said it wrong. I said, the Rabbana actually says she doesn't die. She the the, the ghost is so good that it's told when she doesn't die. Oh, I thought she just didn't deteriorate. No, so I, I correct myself. I said that according to the Rebbe, she deteriorates and dies. The Rabbanan says she just says she doesn't die. And the question is, do they think that she even deteriorates? According to one opinion, according to the Rabbanan, there's no marked, uh, no effect of the water if she has the chus. Which always then raises the question that why doesn't that just so undermine the entire process? Yeah, so which is what the Gemara is about to ask. Okay. So let's take a look at the Gemara. Okay. But basically where we are right now is, is that um, the witnesses come, we're assuming the case in the Mishnah is the witnesses came after the water, and we believe the witnesses. So the question is, why do we believe the witnesses? Why doesn't the water ritual, like, prove them lying? 
So right now we have two explanations, either because it proves the point that if there are witnesses, the water doesn't work, or because there's other reasons the water didn't work. Mm-hmm. It would be like the position of the Chachamim who argue on Rebbe, who would say that if she had a Zuchot, there would be no effect of the water. It would completely neutralize the effect. So there's two different ways of understanding why the water didn't trump the witnesses. And one of them is evidence to, w- would be the position that if there are witnesses, the water is ineffective. But there's another way of reading it, that it was ineffective for a different reason. It was ineffective because she had Zuchot, and according to the rabbis who argue on Rebbe, she, it has absolutely no effect when she has Zuchot. Okay. There's a note here attributed yes. to Rashi, which seems to... Uh, yeah, it says what? According to Rabbi Yosef, the rabbi is not altogether true. Rabbi is certainly a shelter from merit suspense punishment gradually takes away. Rather, she shows no immediate ill effects from the bitter waters. And when the extension granted her by her merit ends, she dies suddenly. Oh, so she does die in the end. According to Rashi. This uh, is... And in the food is... She uh, this Rashi that I read said... One minute. Hold on. Uh, 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 I think this is the last year, I think. Yeah. Or, 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 or again, like the he's not Manuka Melbourne. It could be the other way, right? Well, what you said is it's good that. I, I don't see that in the Rashi Rav, Rav Shesha Savar. The way I read Rashi Rav Shesha Savar is that the rabbis say that she doesn't die. But okay. It, anyway. It says according to Rav Yosef is the Rashi. Oh, the according to Rav Yosef. Yosef. Yeah, the rabbis on 20A, it says you will together dispute. Oh, according to Rav Yosef. Okay, yeah, fine. Which I, I was talking about Rav Shesha. Right. All right, let's move on. So the message is like this. Um, okay. Um... Okay. Okay. Rav Shesha Savar. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. Um, okay. 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 Mostly Rav Shimon Bar Ashi. Rav Shimon Bar Ashi asks. Rav Shimon Omer. Ain zechus tola b'mayim hamarim. So Rav Shimon says, I can't buy into any of this thing about the zechus being tola. Vima ta omer zechus tola b'mayim hamarim. Because if you were to say such a thing, medachet ata ata hamayim bifnei kol anashim. Hashatot. You basically are undermining the uh, effect of the water. But in, b- b- for all women that have to undergo this ritual, now everybody will basically say, you know, this is bogus. I know so and so who did commit adultery and the water didn't work for her. And you basically, you know, undermine its power for well, all those all women. Too. The ata motze shame ra ala tahorot shishatu. And then you also are libeling all the women that were, li- were legitimately innocent. Because they ain't no mean to me. It was how you elish shatalo hem zechus. Because they'll say they were actually all guilty. So the women who are guilty will say you can get away with it. And the women who are, who are innocent, people will suspect them of being guilty. The whole thing is undermined. It's just so often you can't come up with it. You can't say this idea. In Isa, now, of course, what's so fascinating about this is, is that like, here we're trying to figure out whether miraculously it had this effect or not. And we're determining it based on whether it like logically could have worked out, you know, sort of like, well, <laughs> according to the way I understand what good policy would have been this could not have this could not be true so obviously it wasn't true okay so anyway the in Isa they won't so, be innocent women they're going to get pregnant and have children whereas so everybody will see oh that's a good Where point <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe that's a good point that the preg- being pregnant would be an evidence about that in Isa, if it's true, So according to that, Rabbi Shimon, his critique should be just as good, just as legitimate on this idea that if witnesses far away, you know, pre- prevent the water, that's going to make every woman who comes out innocent, suspe- people will suspect. Maybe she's really guilty and they're just witnesses or something. Okay, wait, so, so, you saying that or? so how do you answer that critique? So the Gemara says, Rabbi Shimon, come on, say, you want to know about Rabbi Shimon? Of course Rabbi Shimon won't agree with right. me. Rabbi Shimon means, Of course Rabbi Shimon rejects any of the idea that anything else could interfere with the process. Okay? But I'm saying within the idea that if we accept that other things interfere with the process, so Aiden could also interfere with the process. Okay. Masiv Rav. So Rav asks, The following women, their minchas are burnt. Okay, which means that even after they brought their mincha and put it in the klisharet, in the, in, right in the, in, the, in the vessel, which sanctified it, and once it's put in the klisharet, you cannot be poed to it, you can't redeem it. So if it can't be brought, all you can do with it is burn it. But even so, if the process gets interrupted in the middle, and um, you can't bring the mincha, then you can't redeem it. So at that stage, all you can do is burn it. So who falls in that category? Or, I mean, pretty much everybody like in our Mishnah. Homer's Tmea Ani, a woman who admits she's guilty, we would stop the process and burn the Mincha. Mm-hmm. And that witnesses came, just like our Mishnah. 
So back to the same question. The Asu Eidim Amos. Now this is before she drinks the water. Okay? So when do the witnesses come? Ilema Mikmi Detiktosh. If it's before you put the Mincha in the vessel, paper Kluchulin. Just redeem it. Ella Lebasa Dekada. She must be put in the vessel. Okay? And since it was put in the vessel, now, now it's, so it's Kedusha Saguf. We can't redeem it. We can't continue the process. We have to burn it. If, had the witnesses not come, the waters would have done their job, then, we would, then it would have been fine. It's something that could have been brought. Um, had the witnesses not come, it would have been a completely fine process, and it would have worked. And now that the witnesses come, we can't finish it, we have to burn it. So, and when it was sanctified, it was properly sanctified, because it was a process that could have been completed. Um, and therefore we burn it. But if, now that, now that we know there are witnesses, what do we realize? We realize that the whole process never would have worked. Right? The witnesses showed up before we got to the water, but now we realize, oh my God, there were witnesses in Spain. Now, the whole thing wouldn't have worked at all. Because of, had they not shown up, it wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have worked. So now that we realize this, Tigri with Muslim Afreya, we retroactively realize the Chi Kadosh, Meikara, Betos Kadosh, that the whole thing was an error because the whole process wasn't fit for working from the get-go. Even had they not shown up, it would not have been an effective process. Mm-hmm. Right? So now the whole sanctity was Betos and the Tepe Kluchurin. And now we shouldn't even have to redeem it. Everything was Betos. We wouldn't have to burn the Mincha. It wasn't Kadosh. And because uh, the whole thing was being done Betos, it would have been an ineffective process. Even ineffective even process. Right? So the um the table who it so that's a good question. I'm gonna have you to me disc me discrita to go and shazin sabeazara. Okay. So what happened was no 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 no. It was ready to work because there weren't witnesses about something she did a year ago and the witnesses were in Spain and they just showed up. The witnesses came and said to us after you put the mincha in the cliché, she went ahead and we saw her sneak off into some room and commit adultery. <laughs> in the base of mincha. In the base of mincha. And that's why we can't go through with it. But when you put the cliché, actually at that stage, uh, you know, we, there were no witnesses. Whether she was innocent or guilty, we don't know. But there were no witnesses and it was a fit for working, the process. It only becomes unfit once it now. Of course, the funny thing is, but that's not what she was suspected of. She wasn't suspected of adultery. <laughs> unless you're saying it's the same guy. But anyway, but one of the things we do wind up saying is is that she says so we say so once she's going through this process even if the actual commit of adult, she committed adultery with a different man um, she also the waters have the same effect so that's so interesting you were saying that if there are witnesses of committing adultery even not the one that she was specifically suspected of nevertheless like the waters presumably would find her guilty and the presence of the witnesses prevent the waters from working yes I don't know if there's a comparable case but it's certainly in Kachim aren't we very strict about things that Aren't really colors, but they... Oh, so we're going to get to that answer. That maybe we're just... Okay, so we'll get to that answer. So let's take a look. But, we, but let's have some fun here. So it says, And the witnesses were just about this one act he did right now. And that's enough to interrupt the process. So says, what do you mean? She's got an escort. How, who, how did she commit adultery? Maybe. Yeah, so what, what about the Kohanis that are coming here? So the Gemara says, she's in some of the Kahunas. All right. So she had it with one of them. So the Gemara says, Rav Ashi Amar, Rav Ashi says, she's going to need to go in the Kavah. No, she had to go to the bathroom. The odd to Pirchei Kuna Bechipa Tzalula. What you think they keep her like in you know in you know in, 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 in a jail? So you know they give her some freedom of movement. So she had excuse me, I got to go to a bathroom, and that's when she did it. Okay. Anyway, that was one answer. That was fun. Rav Papa, now Rav Papa says, Olam Kida Amin Meikar. It's like we always say. The Tkam is Tepek Lechulin, meaning not that she committed adultery, not that she committed adultery in the Beit Hamikdash. Okay, the witnesses came and said she committed adultery a year ago, okay, and they were in Spain and they just got here now. So now I only say retroactively it was not sanctified because it was all betos, because it never would have worked. So it says, 
Midar Bonan, Gzeira, Shema Yomu Motsi, Mikli Shar Sechol, which I think is effectively right what, was, what you were asking, which is, yeah, okay, you're right. Technically, it's not Kadosh, and you could just go ahead and eat this Mincha, whatever, it never was sanctified, but it looks to everybody like it was sanctified. And people don't know this halacha that because of the Aiden retroactively, it never would have been effective or whatever. So therefore, because of that, that people should not suspect, like, how are we taking something that was sanctified in Klisharis and not treating it with Kedusha, therefore we burn it. Okay, so Rav Mar- Rav Mari, so Rav Mari asks, so good. You see, when you stop talking, sorry. <laughs> see, the problem is you're too engaged. All right, so Mazi Rav Mari, so Rav Mari asks, Mit meis min chosa, ad shelo kitsha b'kli, haredi kichol ha minachos v'tifteh. So there's a diff- this is so here the sota is mincha. Not that the process is not going to be good because she admitted or witnesses came or whatever. So that's a normal thing happened. The mincha became tamei. So if it was before it was put in the kli shares. So haray kolam nechos v'tifade. So it's like in all minchas before it was put in the kli shares, it could be redeemed. It doesn't have yet kedusha zaguf. You just redeem its value and you you know use the money or whatever. Or you you know you bring another mincha. Mishakid should be kli once it was put in the kli shares. And it came to May, then it's Kiddusha Sagof, you can't do anything. Hariku Cholam and Achos, which is a race, it gets burned. Now, Kiddusha Komet, you took the hand breast from it, so he speaks La Hakrivo, and you didn't yet bur- offer it up on the altar. Achimei Su, or Achimei Sahi. Now, he or she died, so now it's a more normal, particularly Sota reason you can't go through with it. Nobody admitted, but if one of the relevant parties dies, you're not going to go through the process. Okay? So what do you do? You can't, you, it's sanctified Kiddusha Sagof, you can't redeem it. You can't go through with the process because there's no longer a point because they're dead. Yeah. So in that case, I call him in the house with his array, so then you have to burn it. Nothing left to do. Kareva Komet, it was offered up. And now it was burnt and the mincha was a kosher korban. And now just, now there's no, we're not going to continue the ritual with the water because one of the parties is dead. But as a korban, when it was brought, it was, everything was in place. It was right at all, all the proper, you know, re- requirements were met. And it was still, a, the process at that stage seemed like it was going to continue. So in that case, so then you go out and eat it. It was brought legitimately. At the very outset, it was brought out of doubt. Okay. It, it, now, the word keep rah he says, does not mean atone, but it sort of meant it did its it job. It worked. It was brought as it was supposed to have been brought. Okay. The fact that, like, retroactively, we didn't need to clarify because we of them were going to die. Well, who cares? At the time, we didn't know. And at the time, we didn't know whether she was innocent or guilty. There was always an element of, like, what purpose it was going to serve. Okay, but it was done in the right context, so we're done. Bola edim. That, okay, that's all background, not relevant for our point. Bola edim sheets me'ah. Now finally the witnesses are coming. Min chasani shreset. Okay, they're burnt. Now again, that's the, either because retroact, either because now you can't do it, or the other explanation would be retroactively we see it never could have been done. Really, it never should have been kadosh. But now the argument would be because of you know it, because of midra banan. We don't want it to look like we're just de- desanctifying something that was sanctified. Okay. Misrefet means agave misbe. No, 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 no. Beis hadesh. Right. Not as a nimsui des zomimim. Now, what happens if? The witnesses of the Kinoi and the Stira, which allowed us to go through the process, were lying. They were proven to have falsified their testimony. By okay, another pair of, so by another pair of witnesses. Yeah. In that case, min chatachulin, min In that case, ah, oh. so the whole thing was a bogus to begin with. So we can go ahead and just ah, eat, 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 eat. We can just go ahead and eat the mincha. Chulin was never sanctified. You don't have to burn it. You don't have to redeem it. It was never sanctified. So the question is, right? So you just got through saying that even if retroactively it was not valid, we would have to burn it because of appearances. Well, here retroactively was not valid, right? Because the whole basis, the whole initial witnesses were lying. And we say, uh, we don't have to burn it. We say we can treat it as chulin. So how do you reconcile that? And she goes home with her husband? And, and she goes home with her husband, yep. So the says, one minute. You're talking about witnesses that have been proven to be to perjure themselves. No, everybody finds out about that. Like, oh my God, did you hear that the witnesses were lying or whatever? And other witnesses have to come to prove those witnesses lying. So everybody realizes, and also like it becomes clear that the whole story was was a bo- was bogus, right? Mm-hmm. When it's clear that, that meaning it's not just I think that people find out about the Adam Zomim. It becomes obvious that there was no. Basis
basis for it and you understand why the mincha wasn't sanctified. But when witnesses come at the end to say she committed adultery, you don't understand why the whole process was bogus. Who knows that halacha? That all, that, that, you know, the waters won't work in those cases. Okay? So the Gemara says, Tani Kavasi Rav Sheshes, we talk like Rav Sheshes, the Lavi Taimei, but not, ba- but not based on the same Pusuk he gets it from, because he got it from Eiding Ba, and here's where, where we get it from. Tahora, Tahora. It says, Utahora he, Venikasa Venizra al Zara. right? Then when it works, and she is pure. Tahora, Veloshiyesh la Eidim Ibdina Hayam. The waters will only prove that she's Tahora will work, she's but really it, if she's really Tahora, but if, there's, but if she has witnesses in Medina Sayyam, then maybe she came out clean for a different reason, that the waters are not going to work in that case. Okay? So that's the, where it learns it from. Same halacha from a different pasuk. Vitahora, the extra vav, the lo shatalsalah zechus. And not that there's another no, reason, some other reason, there. right? Uh, she, she has some merit. So, he... Mm-hmm. So, now this is an interesting point. If everybody is, she is so guilty that everybody is, or so suspected, perceived, perceived yeah. that everybody is gossiping about her, it says, it talks about the women knitting in the moonlight. Okay? <laughs> so if, if, if all the yentas are gossiping about her, the waters don't work. So okay? So, which is a very interesting drusha. Okay, so that, so anyway, but we learn out that there are other reasons why the waters, don't, other th- things the waters don't work, and one of them is that there are witnesses in Dina Fayam. And now the word says, Rabbi Shimon, he devavlo darish. Rabbi Shimon, who rejects these explanations, says that nothing will prevent the waters from working, because then it undermines the whole, you know, efficacy of the waters, or the whole, like, legitimacy of the waters. So, okay, he doesn't darish in the extra vav, utahorahi, to say zechus tola. But he should still, the word Tehora should still teach, he should still concede that that teaches the idea that if there are witnesses in Medina Sayyam, the waters shouldn't work. What is that word Tehora doing? Why can't he concede that point? So he says, you know what? Lo um, Shricha, that's not common. So maybe there are uh, some rare cases where there'll be another explanation why the waters doesn't work, but as opposed to what we said before, which is that Reb Shimon would, which actually was a more satisfying answer, I think, that Reb Shimon would reject any other explanation because then it undermines the waters. Here we're saying because of the drusha from the Pasuk, he can't really deny the drusha, that he'd have to concede that the case of witnesses in Medina Sayyam would impact the waters, but that's not going to affect their legitimacy because it's such a rare case that's not going to have a, you know, that's not going to have have a bigger impact in terms of the perceived legitimacy of the water.